Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. So in this session of geography, we shall discuss the topic called Indian soils. So why do we need soil? Soil is required for the production of food. Nowadays we have hydroponics with, uh, without soil, they are growing food. But most of the produc food production in the world is carried out through soil only. Right? So agriculture means it is a cultivation of soil to grow different things. Right? So moving on to soils. So does it take one, uh, one month or two months to create soil? It takes lack, uh, years to create one centimeter of soil. So that's why we need to protect our soil but we should not destroy our soil, right? So soil is a mixture of rock debris or different minerals, right? So generally how soil is formed, so soil is formed or its formation depends on different factors. The first is the parent rock. So parent rock means it's the original rock where the actual soil comes from. So parent rock derives the actual composition of a soil. So how does this rock breaks? So it may be during natural breakage or it may be artificial break so this breakage of rocks into smaller pieces is called as weathering if it takes naturally it is called as physical weathering mechanical weathering chemical weathering chemical process will involved to break that rocks so that type breakage of rocks is called as weathering right so parent rocks is very much important for the soil formation right next is climate so climate of that place will influence that soil formation right obviously in this polar climate there is a different soil if it's tropical climate there will be different soil right next is a slope if it is mountain there will be different soil if it is normal plain or plateau it will be different like that the next is time so time will decide which type of soil will also form Right? So these are the factors where the soil formation depends upon. Moving on to general classification of soil. So there is a general classification. What are those? The first is sandy soil. Next is loamy soil. And the next is clay soil. So which soil is called as sandy soil? The particles of the soil are very large compared to other soils. Such soils are called as sandy soils. So as the particles are very large, so the distance between two or more particles will be very high. So the water, if I pour water in that soil, it will easily go downwards because of the distance, because the particles are heavier. So the distance between two particles will also be large. So the water penetration will be high. Clear with this? Okay. So that's why it is called as sandy soil. And the next is clay soil which is opposite to sandy soil. The particles will be very small and the distance between two or more particles will be very less. So that's why when I pour water on a clay soil, it will retain. The water retention is high and water penetration is very low. Water will not go downward easily because of the lesser distance between the particles. And the next is the middle soil called loamy soil between sandy and clay the particles will be on medium size between sandy and clay soils okay next is moving on to indian soils or soils of india what are the different types of soils in india so there are six types of soils in india the first is alluvial soil the very fertile soils next is black or rigor soils next is red and yellow soils next is lateral soils next is desert or arid soils and the next is mountain soil. Now we shall discuss about them in detail. Moving on to the first one. So this is a Indian soil map. Right. You can see in the Jammu and Kashmir parts. The dark green parts are the mountain soils. The light green parts are the alluvial soil. A very light green is like. Uh, that is a black soil or rigor soil. And the red one is red or yellow soils. The northeastern region is dominated by most of the soils. Right. Uh, very small portions of the yellow colors or the light green is called as the and at the western guards is the laterate soils we'll discuss all those now so first is alluvial soils so they are dominated in the regions of the indo-gangetic or brahmaputra plains indo-gangetic brahmaputra plains so why they are fertile because of the rivers right so rivers bring fertile soils to india and the these are the perennial rivers because they flow throughout the year, right? Compared to Godavari, Krishna and the southern peninsula rivers, the Himalayan rivers are perennial in nature. They flow throughout the year. So that's why they bring huge fertile silt, we call it as silt, to the northern India. 
So these soils are developed in the northern India and they are called alluvial soils and they are very fertile of all the soils. Right? And they are go both good for Karif as well as Rabi crops, both for southwest monsoon as well as northeast monsoon. And they are mainly considered in the Indus Ganges plains. And they have Bangar and Kadar. Bangar is older alluvium, we have seen, and the particle size is higher, that is coarse in nature. And Kadar is newer alluvium, the particle size is lower, and uh, it is fine in nature and very fertile in nature. And uh, moving on to black soils, right. And black soils are also called as black cotton soils or rigor soils. Okay. Because they are, why they are called black cotton soils? Because they are very useful for cotton growing. Right. Remember the very repeated question. Black soils are also called as rigor soils. Okay. And they are generally developed in the Deccan Plateau. We have already seen in the uh, figure the Deccan Plateau. Particularly you can see. Right. So, because of the lava formations, the lava which has erupted out of the Deccan Plateau, this has resulted in the black soils. Okay. So, black soils are also fertile but lesser than the alluvial soils. They are around the Deccan Plateau regions in Maharashtra, all those places. In Telangana, some parts of Gujarat, some parts of Madhya Pradesh. Okay. And uh, they are highly clay in nature. The particle size is very less, water penetration is less, water retention is high, they will hold water because they will be sticky always because they are clay in nature and they are highly moisture retentive, they will hold water and they de develop cracks, right. Whenever we see in agriculture there is less water, they, you see cracks in the agriculture, right, on the agricultural land. That is particularly in black soils. Whenever there is very less water on black soil, they develop cracks. Right. Moving on, they are found in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, and parts of Tamil Nadu, and they are rich in rich in lime and iron. Okay. Alluvial soil was rich in potash and they, it lacks humus. What do you mean by humus? Humus means organic content. Whenever plants and animals die, they become an organic content. That is called humus. Okay. Alluvial soil is also deficient in humus and uh, Black soil is also deficient in humus, phosphorus and nitrogen. But they are rich in lime, iron and magnesium and aluminium. And they are very suitable for cotton, tobacco, chili, oil seeds, maize, or jowar, ragi. Okay, jowar, bajra, ragi are called millets, right. And next is red and yellow soils. Why they are called red soils? Because of the iron content in the soil, they are called red soils. Why they are called yellow soils? Whenever these soils become hydrated form, okay, when they acquire water, they become yellow soils, okay, hydrated form. Clear with this? You can see the red soils in the figure. We have seen in the soils map, the red color portion is all the red soils, okay. The eastern part of the Deccan, the eastern side of the Deccan plateau, everything is in red portion. The Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana. Odisha, all these are red soils dominated places. Okay, clear with this. And they are uh, they rich. They are rich in potash and uh, become fertile with the use of fertilizers. When we use fertilizer, they become more fertile as well as excess ploughing and irrigation. And they are deficient in nitrogen and lime, and as well as magnesia and humus. Okay. Moving on to the, actually it is present in Chota Nagpur Plateau, Telangana, Nilgiris, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. I have already told you this. They are suitable for the cultivation of millets. Jowar, Bajra and Ragi or these are called millets, right? And pulses, linseed. Linseed is a oil crop, okay? Tobacco, all these are suitable for growing in red and yellow soils. Okay, we'll meet in the next sessions of the part 2 of Indian Soils. Thank you.